Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode 106 of the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. In this episode, I talk about how using animal medicine and specifically how to use porcupine medicine to enrich your life. So stay tuned. Hello, fire goddesses. Welcome to the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am a prosperity coach for the newly awakened or awake curious, driven overachiever and overdoer. After running a successful acupuncture practice in Boston for 12 years, I decided to hang my hat by closing the practice and pursue what it is that I'm really meant to do in this world, and that is to serve humanity online on a global scale. Using my background in Chinese medicine, along with the brain science of habits, spirituality, and divine masculine and feminine energy balance, I am here to help you not just understand, but know how powerful you are and that you are the person who is responsible for having the finances, inner peace, radiant health, and energy aka the fire in your life that you've always desired my intention with this podcast is to serve humanity no matter what gender you identify as to help bring out the divine feminine goddess in each and every one of you as you probably are already aware the world is changing and is begging for the goddess to come out in each and every one of you so fire goddesses Stay tuned. Hello, everybody. It has been a while since I've recorded a new episode. Welcome to the next episode of the Reclaim Your Fire podcast. My name is Angela Noel, and I am the host of this podcast. And what I wanted to talk about today is something that I've been personally diving into, and I think it is such an important topic that I wanted to share with you what I've taken away from this particular lesson, and that is about embracing the medicine of porcupine, and which I will explain in a little bit. Embracing the medicine of porcupine in order to have more enrichment, more joy, in order to lead a life of beauty, of a higher being of enrichment. And I feel like I'm a little out of practice in podcast land, to be perfectly honest with you. So I'm just going to go. That is my intention. I'm going to go. And what comes out of me is what I trust needs to come out and be said. I may or may not stumble on my words. Oftentimes I stumble a little bit in the beginning and then I get into flow and it just kind of happens. Also, I want to mention, as you probably know, many of you know, I recently had a major life change and I moved across the country. And some of my business equipment is still packed into boxes and I have been unable to locate some of these things such as my podcast microphone and I just out of principle I do not want to buy more stuff I'm really really being more intentional about buying more consuming more I'm being more intentional about spending in general and being more responsible with my money with my money decisions and also just with the amount of stuff that I buy in regards to my impact on Mother Earth, on Pachamama. So anyway, that is my long explanation for why this audio may not sound as clear and the quality may not sound as great. It's because of that. It's because I don't have my microphone I'm just talking right into my laptop. So more importantly, you know, what I've learned over the years as an entrepreneur from my mentors is it's more important to just get it done than to focus on the perfection of it. So 
if it doesn't sound great, I really trust that the message is still going to be delivered in a way that it is going to help you and help enrich your life somehow. And speaking of enriching your life, that is what I want to talk about. I want to talk about the importance of using a specific animal medicine, porcupine medicine, in order to enrich your life. So the reason why I'm choosing to talk about this topic is because I tend to be I mean, we're humans, right? We're, we tend to be complicated, I, I think. I mean, some people say, no, we're not really that complicated. We're just being complicated by having the identity or taking on the identity of being complicated. But, you know, it's not, I think because of societal expectations, oftentimes I feel like we get forced to be put in boxes or we, we put ourselves in boxes. And that's just not how we work. That's not how the universe works. The universe doesn't, you know, you probably have heard this before. The universe doesn't act in a vacuum. It is not in a vacuum and neither are humans. And we are, as a result, I think we're multidimensional beings. We are not a one size fits all. We are not linear. And you know, that's something that I, I talk about a lot on this podcast is, you know, the importance of really being your truest, mo most authentic, aligned self. And with that said, I want to just really bring home the idea that when I say that I tend to be a more serious person, I hear myself say that and then I say, well, what are you talking about, Angela? You're not that serious. Like, you're always dancing around and having a good time but I think I do have this part of myself that I'm always working on that I'm always working on not taking myself and my life so seriously meanwhile I love to have fun and I love to dance and sing and have a good time but there is this part of me that has to remind myself to have fun and just to be a little more light-hearted in my life and the other day, I was asking for some guidance. I, I, I do a lot of, of work with my dreams in dream time. And for probably the last couple of months, my dreams have been very, not very clear. So I, ha I got in the habit of starting to use animal medicine to enhance my dream time experience so that I could better understand my dreams. Because sometimes my dream time didn't become clear until I was up and already awake and journaling the next morning and then I'd remember. But I started using this as a tool more regularly to help help me in dream time, help me remember my dreams, help me gain some clarity with what dream time was about the night before and that is using my animal medicine cards. And I will post the link to the card deck that I use in the show notes because this is a deck that I've had for about 10 years or, or more, probably more than that. And I love this deck so much. You can get it on Amazon. I recently purchased this as a gift for my sister for her most recent birthday. And I just think it's a, a really good tool to use when you are needing a little bit of guidance. And one thing that I want to say about cards, just a little bit of a side note, because I'll, I'll, I'm just going to share with you how I use cards, how I use um, oracle cards and animal medicine cards. I don't allow them, or I, I don't necessarily use them to replace what I already know. Does that make sense? Because really this path, this spiritual path, this those of you that choose to take on an intuitive path and use your intuitive your intuition as your north star as your guidance i've said this many times before like all that you need is within yourself and it's becoming really really i think more clear and more obvious as we evolve that everything that we ever need is within us and when we start to really lean into that and trust that everything that we, all of the guidance that we ever need is with, within us, 
it becomes easier and easier and easier to trust our intuition. So with that said, with cards, the way I use cards is how can I leverage the knowledge that I already have within myself through the use of cards? And one thing that I want to really point out is to trust, really. Like with when it comes to intuition, when it comes to walking this path, trusting your intuition, not, not just your intuition, but the cards that you pull, that the guidance that you receive in order to pull the right card that you're going to use for that particular question or for whatever problem you're, you're looking for clarity on is the right card. So with that said, I want to share with you a little bit about what I've learned about specifically around porcupine medicine. Porcupine is not a, a card that I was overly familiar with. It's not a card I've pulled a lot. I think maybe in the 10 years I've had this deck, I've pulled it maybe two other times besides this. And now I just feel like I'm a lot more in tuned to the animal medicine signs and the omens that I receive throughout my day-to-day -day life that, like, whereas before, it's not that I wasn't tuned in, but I just feel like I'm at the point in my life now that if I pull this card, this is the card I'm supposed to pull and this is the guidance I'm supposed to receive. Whereas before, I remember thinking, oh, I don't like this card. I'm going to pull another one, right? Like, I remember doing that many, many times in my early days when I really started using cards as tools. So I want to also mention that as, you know, for guidance for you. If you're new to using cards, if you're new to really being committed to using your intuition as your most important source of information. So the other day... I came out of dream time, meaning I, you know, I woke up, I woke up one morning and I wasn't really clear on the, the guidance that I received in dream time. So I asked for some clarification. Um, and then I also want to say that before I go to bed, I always ask some kind of question. What do I, you know, if it's something that I need help on with a particular thing that's going on in my life, whether it's my business, my personal life, I always almost always go to bed with like a certain question or or asking or seeking guidance so i had asked for some clarification on a business not i wouldn't say problem but i i needed some clarification on my business so i woke up the next day and and i i think my question had something to do with what are, you know what am i missing what do i need to see more of when it comes to my business and there are a few more details, but I won't really go into it. That's, that's, I think that's the most important context that I can share with you. And I pulled the porcupine card for this. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about what I've learned about porcupine medicine. Again, this is from the book Medicine Cards by Jamie Sams and David Carson. So I will, again, link this up in the show notes so that you can go and find it yourself. But porcupine medicine is all about this playful innocence. And as I was reading the description of porcupine, I actually started to cry because I was so touched by this medicine. And one thing it said was that, you know, a lot of times if you have dogs or if you have animals that go outside, porcupines have a bit of a negative reputation, don't they? Because if you've had animals that have been quilled, it's no fun. I personally, I have animals, my animals have never been quilled, but I've heard that it can be a little difficult to get those quills out. You gotta bring them to the vet. There's a, there's a particular procedure with getting the quills out and it's no fun, but really porcupines are very, very gentle animals and they are not going to fight unless they are aggressively approached. That's when the animals get quilled. And as far as I'm concerned, you know, if, if my dog or, you know, one of my pets gets quilled, chances are they probably deserved it because they were really trying to go after the porcupine in an inappropriate way. And they violated the boundaries of the, por the porcupine as far as I'm concerned. But another part of porcupine medicine is about this playfulness, about this gentleness. I'm, and I'm gonna share a passage with you and this actually I'm going to share a few passages with you that really just 
spoke to me and it made me emotional at times. So the first passage I want to share is just the nature of porcupines because I feel like, again, so many animals are misunderstood because, you know, it's not something that's part of our mainstream thought, right, is to really understand wildlife. We're, we're more taught to be afraid of everything than to actually learn and respect and appreciate wildlife, in my opinion, and my observation. So the first thing I want to read to you is about their nature. And it says, if you were to observe porcupine, you would immediately notice its quills. Those quills are only used when trust has been broken between porcupine and another creature. Much like otter, porcupine is a gentle, loving creature and non-aggressive. When fear is not present, it is possible to feed a porcupine by hand and never get stuck by its quills. So that's just to give you a little bit of background about porcupine and porcupine medicine. So what I really want to drive home is that this medicine, I just, I, it's so beautiful. Like I just, I feel like I was really able to tune into this animal and understand it a little more. So here's a little bit more. And this is coming from the book. Through understanding the basic nature of this animal, you may come to understand your own need for trust and faith and for becoming like a child again. In today's society, this is a needed reminder to honor the wonder of life and the appreciation of each new day as an adventure and discovery. This next paragraph, this is where I started to cry when I read this. Porcupine sat silently looking at a hollow log. She wondered if it was a playhouse that nature had created just for her. Porcupine envisioned all the things she could do with that log. She could climb on top and make the log roll from side to side. She could go inside and see if there were any juicy worms for her for dinner. And she could also scratch her back on the rough outer bark if she wanted to. And I just, I heard that and I just, again, thought of, I thought of this innocent, gentle creature who had this natural curiosity and wonderment about life who just found joy in, in everyday life, in the simplicity of life, and how she could just create the maximum amount of joy from this log and how she could use it. And I just started bursting into tears. And what those tears were about, I, I think a lot of it was just really relatable. And I'm also just so... We're in cancer season right now, and I'm a cancer rising. I'm a Sagittarius. My, my sun sign is a Sagittarius, but I am a cancer rising, and I just have a lot of, I think, cancer water energy in me. My um, Chinese astrological sign, I'm a water pig. So I have this balance of water and fire in me and this sensitivity that is also, it, it, let's just say that it becomes pretty interesting to have these elements. And for those of you that have water and fire in you yourselves, like I'd love to hear how, how that plays out for you in your everyday life. But for me, I have this fire, this drive, this like desire to do certain things in my life. And a lot of times I won't quit until I do it. And on the other side, I will get easily emotionally drawn in by the story of the porcupine, for example, and just envisioning this beautiful creature with this natural curiosity, this tenderness, and this innocence, which I feel like so many people are missing in life. And that's really what I want to drive home in this episode today is, you know, whether you have had porcupine medicine before or whether you're just a person that feels like you're missing that part of your life that innocence that joy that curiosity 
of a child, I invite you to really tune into porcupine medicine and consider how you can use this beautiful medicine to enrich your life. So there's one more part I want to share about porcupine and it's a little story about porcupine. So I left off where porcupine was playing with this log and trying to figure out what she was going to do with it and porcupine is approached by bear and she says to bear, hello bear, do you want to play and share my log with me? And gruff old bear snorted, porcupine, don't you know that I'm too old to play? You're in my way and I'm looking for honey, so go away. And porcupine replies, why bear, you're never too old to play. If you forget what it was like to be a cub, you'll always be as impatient and gruff as you are now. So porcupine medicine is about really just softening those parts that we learn in adult land. And I just see that this happening way too often where adults just get into the adult world and they get sucked into the narrative, whether you know it's coming from the news or where, wherever it's coming from, and that life needs to be difficult and hard and scarce and terrible and it's just one big black hole. And I just think that adult life is a little bit too serious. And I've definitely, I've been there, like I get it. I have had my share of being really serious. I think by nature I'm more lighthearted and tender hearted. And I definitely I notice that happening more and more as I become more mature, I guess. But I invite you all to consider you know, where in your life are you being too serious, too stiff, too resistant to being like a child again and observing the world through the eyes of a porcupine, through porcupine medicine? And if you were to do that, how would that feel and what would that look like? Because I just feel that when the world changes, it's going to be when we as the individual choose to change. When we, and you've heard me say this over and over again, it's even in my intro that you hear every time I do a podcast, you hear this intro. The world is going to change when we as an individual decide to change. It's not going to change by another policy or when the government adopts some new needed policy that every all the government officials and politicians are going to have to fight over because it's, you know, whatever. I'm not, I'm such an apolitical person right now, but you get my drift. The world is going to change when we as individuals take personal responsibility for ourselves, for our own happiness for our own joy and this can happen when we really start to embrace the medicine of the porcupine and when we really start to embrace the divine feminine and the divine masculine the the yin and the yang of the universe when we really start to embrace that if we want change we need to be that change right just like Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in the world. And that's when it's going to happen. So I'm sharing this with you because animal medicine has been a really important tool that I personally use with myself, that I use with my clients to tap into that inner knowing that is our divine wisdom that every single human being born on planet earth has access to you have it within yourself i don't care who you are and i don't really care what your circumstances are we all have circumstances every single one of us has stuff going on in our life that is challenging that is life and those are our teachers so our circumstances are our teachers those are what make us stronger. So when we're encountered with a problem, we have the ability to transmute that energy 
by the way that we respond and by the way that we go through our day-to-day -day existence. So animal medicine is a tool that you can use. It's been around forever. And you can use that yourself by simply, if you want to purchase a, a set of animal medicine cards or just by being an observer in nature every single day and making it a habit. I remember my, I'll, I'm going to share a little story with you because there's no accidents, right? I mean, I've been on the spiritual path I think I've talked about this in other episodes. I mean, I before I was I turned 7 and that's really when children in their development, the the age of 7 is usually when the adult world really becomes more influential in children, but before the age of 7, that's when really kids are really tuned in to the magic that is the universe. That's when they have the greatest imaginations and the most creativity, and if that's not fostered, and cultured, then a lot of times they lose that after the age of seven. So luckily for me, I was born with a very intuitive mother, grandmothers, very supportive of my divine wisdom, of my divine feminine, and I was able to cultivate that intuition. So before the age of seven, I remember just receiving messages from the divine and, and really feeling like what somebody would maybe call being a witchy woman. Like I had that, um, and I remember having that probably as early as four years old, having these experiences. I will say this, that there was a period of time where I disconnected from it where I got really, really analytical and I resisted spirituality and I resisted, you know, when people started talking about the energy, I'm like, what are they talking about, right? Because I went to acupuncture school and I think a lot of this happened when I was in acupuncture school. Like I just kind of got a little um, jaded by that kind of talk and I just wanted to talk like a quote unquote regular person, if that makes sense. So, um, and then I was married to a man who was very, very 3D analytical, but had this part of him that was just a natural observer of the natural world. So we would go on road trips and we would be in the middle of a conversation and he'd be like, hawk, and I'd be talking about something and he would interrupt the conversation and say, oh, look, look at the hawk or or look at the crows or or look at the, the deer or whatever. And I remember I used to get really impatient with that kind of stuff. Now I'm totally that person, like I do that. But I want to share that there was a period of time where I was not totally connected to that part of myself. So if you're listening to this and you're like, well, I used to be like that, but I'm not anymore. I don't want you to get discouraged because I think it's part of the, the human existence to get swept into the adult land of life and forget that life is magical and seriously, you guys, like everything that you need, everything that you need as far as signs from the universe, as far as what's already within you is there. You just need to practice it. It's like a muscle, you know, like would you pick up a guitar and just expect to learn how to play like right away? without ever having picked up a guitar in your life? Probably not. So, you know, just like learning how to, to play a sport or learning how to be more, I always like the yoga example because people are like, I can't do yoga because I'm not flexible. Like I always heard that from my acupuncture patients. And I'm like, well, have you practiced yoga before? Like, do you stretch? Like, do you have habits in place that are going to cultivate flexibility like unless you were a gymnast or a ballerina for the first 25 30 years of your life chances are if you don't cultivate flexibility you are not going to be flexible and the same goes for your intuition it is a muscle it is a muscle that requires that you practice over and over again and getting back to port porcupine medicine a lot of porcupine medicine is about faith and is about trust and we as a people really need to start embracing the art of trusting 
trusting ourselves first. And when it comes to your intuition, that is the first thing that I always recommend to every single body, every, every person that always asks me, well, how can I strengthen my intuition? You have to trust. You have to trust the knowledge. You have to trust the intel that is coming through you, no matter what. And, you know, it could be that you're just walking on, you're, walk, you're taking a walk, and you get this, like, feeling about somebody that you see or, or somebody that you know, and it's like, hmm, I don't know, I sense some darkness there. And you just need to trust it. It doesn't mean that it means anything. You just need to trust it. And it doesn't mean that this person is necessarily dark, but it could mean that this is information for you to take in so that you can receive more information. Does that make sense? So when you negate that intel, when you negate that information that comes in through you, when you don't trust yourself, when you don't use porcupine medicine to have faith and trust, that is going to basically weaken that intuition muscle and it's going to basically shut it off. It's like use it or lose it, right? So when it comes to this new world, Eckhart Tolle talked about the new earth, right? When he wrote his book, I think it was in 2007, right? 2005, something like that. This is where we're going. We are going, we are using ancient techniques, yin and yang, the divine masculine and feminine that's been around forever, Native American medicine, whatever it is for you, whatever makes sense to you, that is what we need to start to embrace. Because what we're starting to see is society as a whole is shutting down. And I'm not saying this to be scary. I'm not saying this to be, you know, to be daunting. This is an invitation for you to be empowered. This is an invitation for you to trust that what is coming through to you is actually your truth. It doesn't matter if somebody else dis disagrees with you or not or says you know, that it doesn't make any sense. That's their stuff. It has nothing to do with you. So that's where you start. You start with having faith and trusting in yourself, in your intuition, and having the curiosity and the playfulness of a child. We need to go back to basics, right? And it doesn't mean that we, we don't use what we have available to us, such as technology and such as science. And there's so much information on the internet, right? It doesn't mean that we disregard that stuff. It means that we regard all of the information and we make decisions based on what works and makes the most sense for us in a loving way, in a manner that we are loving ourselves no matter what. And it's a matter of not beating ourselves up if we're wrong. We're moving into a new paradigm where I'm pretty sure people are going to look at us one day and be like, oh my God, remember those ancient humans that thought everything was right or wrong or black or white? Because that's not, that doesn't exist. The truth exists within ourselves. The truth exists in what we perceive to be the truth. That's the direction that we're moving. So I invite you to really, if you're somebody that is always spinning their wheels and stressed and tired and feeling sick, like those are there to serve you. All that stuff is there to serve you and give you information. And that's it. Like, so we experience this world through our bodies not just our minds, like our bodies, when we're in pain, there's, there's something that we are supposed to know when we're in pain. When we're sick, there's supposed, something that we're supposed to know that when we're sick. And Western medicine, which works beautifully in the emergency room when we're dying or, you know, we get into a car accident or something and we need stitches or we need to, you know, fix a broken hip or a leg or knee. But Western medicine doesn't really, they don't teach doctors this, right? And Western medicine has been the preferred medicine for the last 100 years because it was Western medicine that was believed to make the most money and all the other medicines were just basically thrown out the window, right? So that's how that started. 
If you don't believe me, just go, just do the research yourself and you'll get, there's all kinds of information about this. Western medicine doesn't teach us about the wisdom, about our own wisdom that is innate within us. And it is within you and it's the onus is on you at this point to develop this wisdom because this is how you're going to thrive in life. This is how you're going to find more joy in life. This is how you're going to enrich your life more. This is how you're going to reclaim your fire, as I talk about in this podcast all the time. So any questions about this, please message me on Instagram at i.am.angela.noel. I will post the animal medicine cards in the show notes. And I really encourage you to consider this new way of being because the outdated methods proving that they don't, it doesn't work anymore. You know, the, so many people are realizing that the media does not always tell the truth because it's whatever, that politicians don't always tell the truth, that health insurance companies may not have the best of our um, interest when it comes to our health and well-being and really it's on us this is all a beautiful unfolding and an invitation to tap into our wisdom and the wisdom of planet earth and the wisdom of nature and the wisdom of the universe that's what this is about that's what this future is about and I just think it's so exciting it's not a scary thing this is a an exciting thing And I invite you to all come out and play and look at the world through the eyes of a child again, through joy, through trust, through faith, through curiosity. I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening. And until next time, I invite you to be radiant, be powerfully authentic, and know that you can reclaim your fire at any time. Good night. Hi, this is Angela Noel. And thank you so much for listening to this podcast. If you have found value in listening to this podcast, I would be so grateful if you could kindly share this podcast with those you care about. Please help me spread the word of empowerment and possibility and expansion by sharing this podcast. Or you could also leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Remember to follow me on Instagram at I am Angela Noel, or you could go to my website at www.angelanoelinternational.com to learn more about my work and to find out how you can work with me. Thank you very much.